Well, good evening once again. Welcome to another broadcast, Faith Baptist Church, Lagodi, Indiana. We're going to take a break from our proverb study that so I had shared with you earlier, and we're going to uh, do a little devotion about being thankful. Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, I always have enjoyed Thanksgiving for many reasons. When I think back uh, on my uh, heritage. Uh, Thanksgiving was a, a special time uh, for family, a special event. So I think I, all of you by this point uh, recognize that I'm an outdoorsman and I love uh, pursuing white-tailed deer. Well, in the state of West Virginia where I was raised, uh, the Monday before Thanksgiving was always open and day, all, still is, probably always will be, uh, the Monday before Thanksgiving. And so that was... Uh, obviously uh, the lore of the state uh, around Thanksgiving and then when I was young my dad went with his brothers up into the mountains deer hunting and so I, my family at the point at that time I was living in Cleveland Ohio and so we would come down to my grandmother's and spend the Thanksgiving week while my dad pursued the deer and so Thanksgiving has a lot of warm memories and a, a special time and I hope hope it uh, that's true for you also. I hope Thanksgiving is a special time. It seems like uh, as our nation and our world has become more and more commercialized uh, that we can't hardly even get the turkey down and uh, they're wanting, uh, wanting us to go Christmas shopping. It used to be uh, Black Friday. Remember that day after Thanksgiving? Well, that wasn't quick enough for them. Now they uh, even Thanksgiving night at a certain hour the store are opening. And before you know it, I was Christmas shopping before we even enjoy our Christmas meal. Uh, now, I don't want you to take me as a person that's just uh, built to complain. <laughs> my, my wife may feel that, but I don't want you to think that I'm just built to complain. Uh, so, but Thanksgiving is a special time. And so begin reading with me if you would. In the fourth chapter, book of Philippians, reading the fourth through seventh verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, did you see how that's all packaged? Uh, we're, we're to rejoice in the Lord. You know, when you're being thankful, it just kind of makes you more happy, doesn't it? You, you, you appreciate things, you look forward to things. And uh, your moderation, you know, self-control. Yeah, let everyone know that. And it says, be anxious about it and nothing, but prayer and, and supplication with thanksgiving. You know, a thankful heart goes a long way. Uh, I, and I'm just as guilty as any person on the planet, maybe more guilty. I have so much to be thankful for. I really do. I have, I have a wonderful marriage. I have a wonderful two beautiful uh, girls or ladies, if you would, as my daughters, uh, grandchildren. I have uh, son-in-laws. Uh, my parents, godly parents, uh, my brother and sister-in-law and niece, and you go all layers. So family-wise, I'm, I'm covered. And then uh, health-wise, we've been very thank, uh, fortunate in Lily Home, very blessed, if you would, uh, especially this calendar year. Miss Sheila and I were looking the other day, and uh, this calendar year we've been uh, blessed beyond measure with health, uh, very little sickness, few headaches, a few aches and pains, but outside of that, very little sickness. And you go down the list, but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, and I kind of have. <laughs> uh, you know, living life in a, a, a thankful state brings uh, glory to God, doesn't it? You know, he, he's the one that provides. You know, the Philippians uh, were told to always live with Christ in mind. You see your moderation, everything, bringing Christ in. And as we keep him in, in, you know, as we live our lives under spiritual moderation, uh, moderation actually is gentleness, if you would, on our Christian journey. 
uh, will be attractive within without. Have you ever came across somebody who is genuinely uh, uh, gentle and generous? Now, sometimes it's a big tough exterior outside, but they're very gentle inside. And, and, and that goes a long way. Now, uh, thankful, thankfulness will bring peace. Did you see that? Look what it says um, in verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Our hearts and minds. Now, it isn't talking about uh, the heart and mind in the sense of the, the organs, uh, but it's talking about the heart. The heart is who we are, the Bible says. It says, out of the heart. Uh, you know, man responds. And our mind, our, our thoughts, all through the Bible, we're told to control our thoughts, control our mind. So these are very, very uh, interwoven in our journey, those two. And the Bible says that we can have peace. Uh, then, uh, you know, th there's two things that a believer needs in their prayer life. Thanksgiving, and when we're thankful for who we have a relationship with, and then perseverance, uh, patiently waiting upon God's guidance. Charles Spurgeon had the following to say, it is not how much that we have, but how much we enjoy what we have. Isn't that true? I really like that. It's not how much we have, but it's how we enjoy what we have. So uh, I want to spend the next few minutes, uh, next uh, 12 minutes or so, uh, giving you a few primers that should lead us to thanksgiving. We're told to be thankful for what we already have. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to verse 11. And it says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in what state I am therewith to be content. Did you see what Paul said? Paul said, wherever I'm at, I've learned to be content. Then it breaks down, and I don't have time to read it all. But he talks about he's been full, he's been hungry, he's been cold, he's been comfortable. And isn't that most all of our lives? Uh, I didn't put this silver in with a bottle. Uh, I earned it. I've been here on this planet. I've made a few trips around the sun. And uh, so I've earned uh, that gray hair. And I've earned uh, uh, that aging process, if you would. But one thing I've learned, there's been days, there's been some good days. There's some days that I wouldn't have traded for anything. Some of the highlight days. And there's been some days I'd just like to leave out. I wish I never had to. Uh, they were part of my portfolio, if you would. Uh, so, so we see that. Now it goes without saying that if, if, you, if we're not satisfied with what we have, we probably will not be satisfied with a little more. Uh, theologically, this is known as contentment. You've heard that word, be content. Jesus talked about contentment. The Bible repeats over and over and over. It's repetitive about this issue of contentment. Uh, you know, and back to that earlier state, uh, phrase, excuse me, uh, where if we're not content where we're at, probably a little more isn't going to change. You know, they, they did a poll here just a few years back, and uh, the... the actual percentages kind of slipped my mind, but I remember when it came out, I presented it to the church, but it was almost three-fourths of America thought they would be happier if they had just a little more. Now, they didn't ask them if they had, uh, like, double their income, or double, like, if you were in a certain tax bracket, they asked you if you'd be happier if you are in this tax bracket, but the interesting thing is, no matter what tax bracket the individuals found herself in, they want to go to a next tax bracket. And no matter what kind of home they had, they want just a little better home. And so uh, the devil tries to keep you and I, in our flesh, let's be honest, uh, uncontent. The original sin came from uncontentment. Uh, God told Adam and Eve they can enjoy everything except for one fruit. I've heard people talk about when Eve bit into the apple. The Bible doesn't say it was an apple. Matter of fact, I, I'm about the opinion that it wasn't because everybody always says it was. <laughs> uh, it probably was some other kind of fruit. Uh, but uh, Paul said he had learned to be content, uh, which goes against natural human instinct. He had to learn. It's a discipline. So we all have to learn. So uh, let's you and I take a challenge 
uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Uh, maybe that's a good time to tell your family what you're happy with and, and, and appreciative of and, uh, and open that door. Maybe you begin tomorrow. But so the second thing we are thankful for is the fact that God is always good. Uh, if you would turn to Psalms, uh, the book of Psalms. We're flirting with getting close to Proverbs, aren't we? The book of Psalms in the 106th chapter and the first verse. Psalms 106, reading verse 1. And it says, Praise the Lord, all give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Did you get that? He is good and his mercy endures forever. You know, man in his natural state never ceases to be sinful. Uh, yet, but God never ceases to be merciful. God's extraordinary goodness uh, covers for our extraordinary sinfulness. I'm going to say that again. God's extraordinary goodness covers for our extraordinary sinfulness. Uh, probably all of you have joined with me and you're reading an AP story or you hear a news report and something very, very evil is taking place. And you're like, how, how did somebody get there? Uh, that makes no sense. How did they get there? And, and no, don't get me wrong. There's some uh, terrible, terrible sins that maybe uh, you and I have never been guilty of. But yet we, if you look at our lives as a whole, we're extraordinary sinful. Uh, you know, everybody talks about God's forgiveness. Well, if, if you offended God once a day, uh, that, that would be quite a few times. Uh, once a day, that's 365 times a year, and then multiply your years. But if you're like Pastor Jim, I, I would do backflips if I only uh, made a mistake, uh, a sinful mistake once in a day, wouldn't you? So we're extraordinary at our sinfulness, but he's extraordinary in his grace. And then, then uh, another thing that we want to look at, Scripture tells us that we need to be thankful that God never leaves us alone. Turn back to, uh, to excuse me, turn forward, if you would, to Psalms 107. 107, reading verse 4 through 8. It says, They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. You know, uh, we need his guidance. We need his protection. Uh, you and I, uh, as believers, uh, can't be trusted to be alone by ourselves. When these people were in the desert by themselves, it only led to thirst and hunger. Uh, you know, there was a bunch of them. There, 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 some theologians believe there were two million people. Well, you think out of two million people, one of them would figure it out how to find some food and water, but they couldn't. That, because, you know, they, they needed guidance. They needed direction. And, and that's where God comes in. And we see that. Uh, now, he delivers, uh, uh, you know, us. If he provides for us, he straightens our path. Think about some of the things that he gives us on a regular basis. Food, food clothing, shelter, unconditional love. Uh, Dan Ortland says the following. Jesus doesn't simply meet us at the place of need. He lives in our place of need. Isn't that interesting? He doesn't just come and say, you know, I'm going to help you out of there. Uh, he goes a step further, doesn't he? And he's, he, he reaches down, he goes in with us and pulls us out. You know, if you fell in a hole and you need help out, it's one thing for a person to drop a rope and, and pull you out. That would be helpful. Uh, that I would be glad that that happened. But it's another thing for that person to tie the rope around their waist, repel down in that hole, tie you in, and then bring you up without no effort at all. That's a whole different different. Uh, Rescue plan, isn't it? Well, that's what God does for you and I. And then look in Psalms 119, and 
It, it tells us that we need to be thankful for the written word of God. Do you know the written word of God frees you and I? For, uh, it gives, provides us help, provides us peace. It says the following in, in verse 61. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. You know, I will rise. You know, you know, it is by the promises and truths of God, written word, that we can overcome our struggles. He didn't say, I would lay here and wait for your struggle. I'll rise. I'll get above. The way we conquer the uh, conflicts of life is that God provides us. He, he leads us. He, he brings us forward. And then all of us need to spend a little time alone in God's written word. Uh, it'll nourish us and it'll feed our hungry soul. And so look at, uh, before we close, to Hebrews chapter 12. The book of Hebrews, uh, the 12th chapter. And we'll look at the 28th verse. One thing that we should be most thankful for, and I hope you are, is the fact when this life is over, we have an eternal home with eternal dwelling with Jesus Christ. And he tells us that in verse 28. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God with reverence and godly fear. You know, uh, Jesus cannot be shaken. Therefore, his kingdom cannot be shaken. Uh, you know, this world is affected by nature. This world is affected by culture. This world is affected by human reasoning. Uh, but the eternal abode that we're going to is not affected by anything but the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, before I close, there's a, there's a song and there's a line and it's always grabbing me. And it says, all is well, the debt's been paid, all is well, I've been saved. And if that's you tonight, if you know for a fact that you're a born-again believer and, and you're a saved uh, saint of God, all should be well with us, right? Well, listen, I hope you have the best Thanksgiving tomorrow uh, as you enjoy. I don't know, people get away from the traditional meal. I love the traditional Thanksgiving meal, you know, the, the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the green beans, the roll, uh, the whole thing, and the, I probably left out a few ingredients. And yes, 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 I definitely love the pumpkin pie. Uh, one of my favorite things to do at Thanksgiving is after it's all said and done, usually I'm so full from the meal, I have to wait till later to have the pumpkin pie. I don't know about you. Uh, usually I have pumpkin pie, and glass of milk, watch a little football. Ah, uh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a special day, and I hope all of you enjoy it. Uh, let's join me in being thankful uh, to all these things we mentioned. May God bless you. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank for these, your listeners. I ask you bless them, Lord, be with them all tomorrow as they have their Thanksgiving meals and time with family. Uh, some of them, uh, just uh, some of the family members, they may not see on a regular basis, but they'll get a visit with them tomorrow. And Lord, whatever's accomplished from word and deed, we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.